Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a very interesting problem for you guys today. Uh, this one was from an Olympiad in Brazil in 2014. Um, I believe it's called the Brazilian Olympic Revenge. So if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a triangle ABC and the circumcircle is gamma and the bisector of BAC meets the circumcircle at point M. And then we have a line R, so any line R parallel to BC, and it meets um, side AB at X and side AC at Y. So I think these two are swapped in the problem statement. And then MX meets the circle at S, and MY meets the circle at T, and XY and ST meet at a point P, and we wanna show that PA is tangent to gamma. So I'm gonna start out by pointing something pointing out something that I mentioned in many of my other videos, but the angle bisector of BAC has to meet the circle at the midpoint of arc BC. Um, and that's because since angle BAM is equal to angle CAM, the two intercepted arcs BM and CM have to be equal. Okay, so arc BM is equal to arc CM. Okay, so how do we show that PA is tangent to gamma? So one sort of way of rephrasing that, um, so P is defined to be the intersection of X, Y, and ST, those two lines. So a way of rephrasing this is that the three lines X, Y, ST, and the tangent to the circle at A all have to concur um, at point P. So how do we show those three lines concur? Well, one way to show that three lines concur in general is to use the radical axis theorem. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. Okay. Um, so, so we want x, y, s, t, and the tangent at a to be the three pairwise radical axes of some circles. So then the question is, what are those circles? Um, so one obvious circle is the circumcircle of ABC, but how do we choose the other two circles? Um, so like I mentioned, so one of the radical axes is going to be the tangent line at A. So what circle can we choose so that uh, when we take the radical axis with gamma, it's the tangent line at A? And it turns out that um, if we take the circumcircle of AXY, um, that actually is tangent to gamma. Um, so some of you may just see why this is true. So triangle AXY, it's homothetic to triangle ABC. And because of that, the two triangles have to have the same tangent line at point A, or I should say their circumcircles have to have uh, the same tangent line at point A. And, and, and that in, the, in that case, that would be the radical axis of those two circles. Um, so I'm gonna, I just sort of mentioned that without proving it, but I'm gonna give a little mini proof here. Okay. So I'm gonna draw the tangent line to the circle at A. Um, that is the tangent line to the bigger circle, gamma. And we wanna show that it passes through P, but we don't know that yet. So I'm just gonna draw the tangent line part way to a point D. Um, and I wanna show that that is also the tangent line to the circumcircle of AXY at A. And it turns out to be a pretty easy angle chase. Um, so I'm gonna write it out here. Um, but so since DA, since we've defined it to be the tangent to gamma, uh, we have angle DAB is equal to angle ACB. And then since XY is parallel to BC, uh, angle ACB is equal to angle A, should be angle AYX here. Um, and if angle DAB is equal to angle AYX, then that means um, that DA has to be also tangent to the circumcircle of triangle AXY. Okay, so so uh, this little bracket notation right here means the circumcircle. So DA is tangent to the circumcircle of AXY. So DA is tangent to both, both of those two circles. And so it's the radical axis of those two circles. Okay, so said another way, the circumcircle of AXY and gamma, they have the same tangent line, which I'm gonna call L at point A, okay? So I'm gonna draw the circumcircle of AXY. And, and you can see it's pretty obvious, um, or it looks pretty clear from the diagram that both circles are tangent at A, and therefore they have the same tangent line at A, which is their radical axis, all right? 
Um, so what other circle do I choose? I want to show that that tangent line is concurrent with ST and XY. Um, so I want some kind of a circle so that when I take the radical axis with triangle AXY, I just get XY. And when I take the radical axis with the bigger circle, I get ST. So that makes us think that SXYT we want to prove is cyclic. So that's, that's what I'm going to try to do here. I'm going to show that XXYT is cyclic. Um, so here's how I'm going to do it. Um, so I'm going to take this line PY and I'm going to let it intersect the circle in two points. Um, and I'm going to call them E and F. Okay. So to show that this quadrilateral is cyclic, I'm going to want to show that angle TSX is equal to angle TYF. Um, because if I can show that um, one of the angles in a quadrilateral is equal to the exterior of the opposite angle, then that means that quadrilateral is cyclic. So how do I calculate TYF? Well, the angle between two chords, um, so the angle between chord TM and EF, that has to be half the sum of the intercepted arcs. So I brought this up in my video before, um, but it's a fairly well-known theorem. So angle TYF, it's half of arc TF plus half of arc EM. Now, the thing is, not only is M the midpoint of arc BC, it's also the midpoint of this big arc EBCF, and that's because EF is parallel to BC. So I'm going to write this out. Um, so since EF is parallel to BC, uh, because XY is parallel to BC, that means that um, not only is M the midpoint of arc BC, but by symmetry, it's very easy to see that M also has to be the midpoint of this uh, big arc EBCF. Um, okay, so arc EM is equal to arc FM. Okay, and that helps us compute this angle TYF. So we can use the theorem I just mentioned. So angle TYF, it's half the sum of the two intercepted arcs. So it's half of arc TF plus half of arc EM. And then we use this theorem up here. So arc EM is equal to arc FM. So we can substitute that. So, and then half of arc TF plus FM, well, that's half of this arc TM. And that's equal to angle TSM because angle TSM intercepts that arc. And so basically we've shown that angle TSM is equal to angle TYF. But angle TSM is equal to angle TSX. So that means that TSXY has to be cyclic. Uh, and that's because this angle TSX is equal to the exterior of the opposite angle of that quadrilateral. Okay, so we have our third circle, which is the circumcircle of TSXY. So I'm going to draw that in. And now we can successfully apply the radical axis theorem like we wanted. And so the three pairwise radical axes are ST, XY, and the tangent to um, both these two circles at point A. And so those three have to concur. And from that, since we know ST and XY concur at P, they all three of them have to concur at P. Okay? And if all three of them concur at P, well, then PA has to be tangent to the to gamma. So this is a very fun problem. And I used a really interesting idea that I don't know if I've ever used before on my channel. But if you take sort of two homothetic circles, I'm sorry, two homothetic triangles like AXY and ABC, and you take their uh, circumcircles, and they have to be tangent at a point. And so the radical axis is that tangent line. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.